Hey everybody and welcome to another work in progress video. Today I'm going to be working on a brigantine, which is a type of ship for blood and plunder. And uh, as you can see, I've already sort of gotten started here, but I am going to be showing you from the very beginning. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just drying off the hull after I uh, washed it in the sink using just regular dish soap and a toothbrush, uh, using the toothbrush because I wanted to make sure that I got into the nooks and crannies. Uh, according to Firelock Games, um, these hulls required a fairly uh, industrial strength mold release. And so with that in mind, I wanted to make sure that there was nothing left of it when I finished cleaning it. So that's why I made sure to really give it the fine tooth comb, well, toothbrush, if you will. And so uh, it, I really just need to make sure it gets dried at this point. And yeah, before you ask, there was really nothing special about the dish soap. It was just whatever I had in my sink. I threw some into the hull there, uh, put water on it, and then uh, just began scrubbing, you know, worked up a good froth. And that's, that's kind of it. And uh, now I'm just going to go through and pop out some of the leftover flash from the molding process. Uh, there's only a few things, and this is really the main thing, which is these, uh, the, what do you call them? This is where the cannons stick out. I guess they're not really portholes. Uh, they are just there so that you can shoot from that part of the deck. <laughs> I don't know what they're called. Um, yeah, my whole nautical terminology thing. Not, not so, uh... Not, not so there, not so all there. Uh, I have been reading a book about the subject, but uh, it's not like it's all rubbing off. So once I had the cleanup completed, I decided to go through and inventory all of the metal bits to decide uh, which, if any, of these parts were going to need to be um, added to the hull before I began painting. And so I'm looking at like all the rigging bits uh, and the cannon. Um, Cause you know, some of the cannon is just sticks out like that rear portion of the hull. Yeah, right there. And um, the idea is that, uh, you know, since it's not hollow, you just see the, the barrels of the cannon sticking out. And what I decided was that probably wasn't worth the effort in putting them in now. Um, and in fact, there, it was probably not worth the effort to add any of this stuff to the hull before painting it. Um, so I ended up just putting it all away and I was going to come back to it later. All right. And uh, with that out of the way, it's time to do some priming. And for resin pieces, I really like using Badger's Steinal Res Primer. Still think it's one of the worst names in paint. <laughs> but, but hey, that wasn't, uh, that wasn't my decision. Uh, uh, the Steinal Res, I have found, works incredibly well on resin pieces. Even ones that have some mold release left to them, I've found that it, the, this stuff will sometimes just cut right through it. I have had a couple of... Uh, Forge world pieces that maybe not so much. Maybe they uh, uh, it required a little extra effort, uh, or I noticed that the the primer wasn't sticking, and so kind of had to go through a second pass on cleaning. But um, more often than not, the Steinal Res will kind of just get it done, even if I've forgotten to wash the part. Um, and I'm using gray for no particular reason. Uh, I have white, gray, and black. White gets used the least, black gets used the most, and sometimes I just decide to go for gray because I haven't decided whether or not um, white or black would be the more ideal option. And so I just sort of punt and go with gray because, yeah, it always works. And here we've got the primer complete. So the whole thing is just gray.
gray, gray, gray. But uh, at this point, I think we need to start thinking about the paint. All right, with the uh, primer coat done, uh, we're gonna use a little raw sienna. I think that's what that was from Joe Sonia. Uh, it's a tube acrylic and I sometimes use tube acrylic and I'm thinning it with some Createx uh, reducer, which I've found to work really, really well in uh, thinning pretty much any of the paints that I use, any of the acrylic paints. So I'm just gonna give it a nice even coat of this. And I gotta tell you at this point, I haven't quite figured out exactly where I'm going with the paint. Uh, all I knew was that the raw sienna was going to make a nice base for wood tones. It's a very kind of almost ochre color, a little darker, a little richer than ochre. Um, and there's a lot of directions you can go from this color. So you'll see where we go in just a moment. All right, and we've coated the whole thing with raw sienna. It's actually kind of a nice color all on its own. Um, f the strange thing is I think it actually looks richer here in the video than it does in person, but uh, it's not a bad representation of what that color looks like. And honestly, I think this was kind of my inspiration for where I went next so um, but to begin with we're gonna start with the the deck the deck itself and I've got some burnt umber that's my kind of go-to dark brown um, and again it's a Joe Sonia tube acrylic and this time I'm creating a wash with um, a Liquitex airbrush medium and Using Liquitex Airbrush Medium as a sort of basis for a wash is something I've been doing for a number of years now. Uh, in this particular application, um, my hope was that, and, and the way this normally works is that the Airbrush Medium usually helps the paint to find its way into the recesses a lot better than, um, say, a Citadel Shade or... Um, a water-based, a straight water wash would do. Um, I didn't find it to necessarily work as well as I'd hoped on this, and, and I'll sort of show you that when we get there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna, you know, wipe that in. And actually, let me let me explain. And, and I, I discovered this right away as I started washing this on here, and I think the biggest problem was the... Um, the paints that I was using, the Joe Sonia paints, create a very, very flat coat. Um, there's really no gloss to them at all. And I think I would have done better here had I managed to get a little bit more uh, gloss onto that surface before I did the wash. Um, and because it was so flat, it was kind of just absorbing it more than I wanted. It's, so it wasn't gonna run as readily into the recesses as it might otherwise have. And so as, as you see me here, sort of working it with the brush and trying to um, trying to get it to flow and it's just not doing it. So I find myself sort of dabbing up some of the excess um, because it's just not doing what I want it to do. And then I'm gonna go back and spread it around a little bit more. So kind of annoying and not what I expected. And so uh, if I had this all to do again in the future, um, uh, yeah, I think a little, a little gloss coat before doing the wash would have been the way to go. So having done all that, then I decided that I was gonna go ahead and uh, hit some of the individual planks very carefully you know brushing over it uh, so as to not get strokes and to create some variation between the planks um, I don't know how successful this ended up being but I do think it helped um, 
it was just a lot more work than I expected this part to be, yeah, especially since I had to go ahead and do this over the entire ship. So with the deck out of the way, um, I decided to go ahead and get started on the hull, the outer hull itself. And I'm going with a different treatment here. And this is sort of the, the beginning as I ended up kind of going and doing a number of things. But this is just uh, washing with um, Seraphim Sepia from Games Workshop Citadel line. And I kind of had the same problem here that I did with the deck, which is it wasn't really flowing into the recesses because it was so flat. Um, and not only that, the, the shades have their own problem, which is that um, they will dry quickly. And then if you put more shade over the top of it, it'll essentially strip the underlying dry shade and so you end up with sort of clean spots and dirty spots and little clumps of, of shade. So when you're trying to use it on a big area like this, you kind of have to work fast and um, spread it with a larger brush. I was working with a smaller brush than I should have been, been using. So learn from my mistake. There, you can see, I think you can see how that's happening right there. And so what I ended up having to do is to throw on a lot more so that it would just go ahead and completely strip the under layer uh, and kind of start over, which is kind of a pain. But as you can see, I had already done the other side, so um, the final results weren't too bad. It essentially deepens the raw sienna, um, gives it a little bit more vibrancy and oh and you can also see the deck right there so there's a lot of similarities between the color of the deck and the color of the hull at the moment um the but i, I had decided at this point that i wasn't really thrilled with the uh the hull color so I decided to go back and use uh, Reichland, Fl 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 Reichland Flesh Shade. And that is going to uh, warm it up even more, really give it some um, almost reddish tones. And so of course, because there was already a layer of shade down there, I'm gonna have to be really careful with this because otherwise it's going to pull up that sepia shade and create the same problems. So um, yeah, that was kind of a pain. But I think the final result is uh, worthwhile. Unfortunately, uh, there was some kind of spots that were um, not as smooth as I would like, and you could kind of see where the uh, the washes had pooled a little bit and, and mostly just on one side. So I decided to go ahead and go back and use the airbrush to even it out. This is actually something that I do quite a bit with the, uh, with the airbrush um, is to sort of, if I, if I have contrast that I don't want, I can go within with the airbrush and kind of uh, smooth that out. And that's essentially what I'm doing here with a little bit of War Colors uh, Ochre 5, uh, which is very, very similar, but a little more yellow to the uh, raw sienna that I had used initially. So I'm, I'm essentially just going back in and very carefully uh, doing even coats of this color, very thin, very thin coats of the color. And what it's going to end up doing is is really just sort of distributing, well, breaking up the uh, underlying colors to make them more even. All right, with that out of the way, I'm um, really liking how the hull looks. And I've decided that what I'm gonna do is uh, get all of the um, sort of raised detail in the wood is gonna be black. 
and then the recessed area in the upper hull is going to be red. And I think the final results are going to be pretty cool. And here you can see I've already started on one side with the black accent pieces. And so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, work on the other side. And I've, I've got a number two brush that I'm just loading up with uh, some thin down uh, War Colors Black. And just very carefully painting that in, uh, making sure, and this is the most important part, is making sure you don't just do the upper upper part, but you got to get in and uh, um, do the top and bottom of those raised portions as well, or else it's just not going to look right. And that is the harder part to do, because you don't want to get it all over the rest of the hull. All right, with that out of the way, I uh, masked off part of the hull where I'm going to be spraying a little uh, Warcolors Red 4 through the airbrush, uh, thinned with the Createx as per usual. And you don't have to mask too heavily as long as you uh, are careful to kind of aim your spray in such a way that your overspray isn't going to hit anything important on the ship so since i knew that everything else was going to be painted black there i wasn't too concerned about uh the red getting on the upper part of the railing and so yeah this just is going to be the base color and then uh, when this is done we're going to fade it out just a little bit by mixing some white into the red and uh creating what is essentially a pink And the reason for doing that was because the uh, I just wanted to give the impression that the um, that the color has faded some, you know, out in the sun, in the salt water, and uh, without being in port for a long period of time, it's perfectly reasonable that the uh, the color isn't going to maintain its vibrancy. And there you can see the final red tones. Um, at this point, I just went in and started uh, finishing up the black, but I think that's going to end it for today. Uh, and the next part, we'll see what the final look of the hull is and start working on the masts and rigging. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all later. Bye.